Obama has never been accused of being a hawk. In fact, conservatives claim the president is weak on national security and slow to respond. On the campaign trail, if you'll notice, there has been very little conversation about the massive deployment of American military and NATO forces near the Russian border. In the Democratic debate on February 4th, Hillary Clinton made this assertion. But what Secretary Carter is looking at is the constant pressure that Russia is putting on our European allies. The way that Russia is trying to move the boundaries of the post-World War II Europe. The way they, he is trying to set European countries against one another. That comment got very little attention. Moreover, the mainstream media has failed to focus on the military escalation between the United States and Russia. The question begs, is this the beginning of a new Cold War? Joining us tonight, Stephen F. Cohen, professor of Russian studies and politics at New York University and Princeton University. Uh, Mr. Cohen, good to have you with us tonight. Thank you, Ed. You recently wrote a piece in The Nation saying that this military move is unprecedented in military or in modern time. Put that in perspective for us. What do you mean by that? The last time, well, NATO, and that means Washington and that means the Obama administration, has decided to quadruple its military forces uh, on Russia's borders or near Russia's borders. Now, I don't know your age, Ed, but best I can remember, the last time there was this kind of Western hostile military force on Russia's borders is when the Nazis invaded Russia in 1941. There's never been anything like this. During the 40-year Cold War, uh, there was this vast buffer zone that ran from uh, the Soviet borders all the way to Berlin. There were no NATO or American troops there. So this is a very radical departure uh, on the part of the administration. And I have to say, I don't know your thinking about her, about her but what Mrs. Clinton uh, said is entirely factually wrong. Russia is not threatening any countries on its border, and it's not turning European countries against each other. What Russia wants is a stabilized European Union. Well, it was pretty clear from her soundbite and that answer uh, in the debate that she was making justification for the military move as former Secretary of State. At least that's how uh, I interpreted it. But how dangerous is this, and what do you think the Russian reaction is going to be? Well, we're in a new Cold War. We've been in a new Cold War at least since the Ukrainian crisis began in 2013. I would date it back even earlier at least to the proxy American-Russian war in the uh, former Soviet Republic of Georgia in 2008. But we know the Russian reaction. Uh, my, my kids know the reaction. This is a tit-for-tat as we lived through during the last civil war. Uh, Cold War. The Russians are moving their heavy equipment to their western border. And more alarming, this includes tactical nuclear weapons because the Russian doctrine is, and this grows out of their weakness after the end of the Soviet Union, that if they, their state is threatened by overwhelming conventional force, they will use tactical nuclear weapons. So this is a very dangerous and reckless thing to do. You made another point earlier that's just as important. There's no discussion of this in the United States. I don't know of anybody who's had a discussion on American television as we're having tonight, and they certainly don't have it at these Republican or Democratic debates. Well, it seems to me that uh, the conservatives would be cheering this, the, the hawks in Congress, but of course their dislike for Obama isn't going to bring them to that point, and this has gone clearly under the radar with all of the Republican debates and conversation. You know, you also mentioned that you thought that in your piece that you thought this would undermine negotiations between uh, the Ukraine and, and also involving the Syrian crisis. T tell us about that. Well, there are two Cold War, hot war what could be hot war fronts unfolding between America and Russia today. One, of course, is in Ukraine. The other is in Syria. Now, there has been a plan to negotiate an end to the Ukrainian civil war put forward by the French and by the uh, Germans. Secretary Kerry has backed that and worked very hard to get that to come to the negotiating table. He hasn't gotten there yet. There's a lot of resistance. Mm -hmm. The same is true regarding Syria. There is the proposal which came forward after the terrorism in Paris by Hollande, the, pre the president of France, saying there should be a grand coalition that would include Russia against the Islamic State. Kerry has been negotiating that with Lavrov, but and I don't share your position 
that we can be sure President Obama is the dove in this case, because I assume that President Obama controls NATO and controls the Department of Defense. Mm -hmm. And NATO and the Department of Defense have basically stabbed Kerry in the back. Every time he gets five feet closer to bringing about these negotiations, we end up with what we've just discussed, yeah. the movement of weapons to, to Russia's borders. Here, here is the president just a few days ago addressing uh, Russian activity with the Syrian crisis. Yes, Russia is a major military. Obviously, a bunch of rebels are not going to be able to compete with the hardware of uh, the second most powerful military in the world. But that doesn't solve the problem of actually stabilizing Syria. And the only way to do that is to bring about uh, some sort of political transition. I mean, he's basically saying that the Russian involvement isn't helping the situation. That's the interpretation. Your thoughts? Uh, you've got two points of view here. Uh, Russia and the United States are not going to put combat troops on the ground in Syria. Uh, you can't finish off the Islamic State in Syria, no matter how much bombing the Russians and the Americans do, without ground forces. There is only one ground force capable of doing that, and that's the Syrian army. Yeah. And that's not my opinion. General Dempsey, who was the former chief of staff, told Obama that he, Dempsey, agreed with Putin that you had to protect the Syrian army. The retired head of the British general staff said two days ago, Putin is right. We've got to protect, bolster the Syrian army. Yeah. President Obama has a bee in his bonnet about Putin, and he keeps denying this reality. Well, oh. it's certainly caught the accord of many Russian people, especially the faith community. Recently, I had an opportunity to interview the patriarch of the yeah. Russian Orthodox Church, uh, Patriarch Kirill, and he talked about averting war. Here it is. We need to do everything possible to avert war. This is our number one priority for the Americans, the Russians, and many other people with a sensible perspective on what is happening. Professor Cohen, do you think the Russian people are nervous about what's going on? Oh, they're very nervous, but let me congratulate you first on that terrific interview with Patriarch Kirill. I don't know that any other Westerner has ever had anything like that. Let me also emphasize what you probably know, that the church, the Russian Orthodox Church, headed by Kirill, is very important in Russia, and not just in the spiritual world, in the political world. And one of the axioms of the Russian church is, is that it's the duty of the church and the Russian state to protect Christians everywhere. And they have long seen Assad, the despised, at least in America, president of Syria, as the protector of the Syrian Christians. And Kirill, the patriarch of the Russian church, and the Roman pope, Francis, discussed that. As you know, I mean, mm -hmm. you were in Cuba. This is an alliance of the two churches, the two branches of Christianity, on behalf of protecting Christians against the Islamic State. So I will leave you with a question. If the two religious leaders who have had a spiritual civil war, Cold War, for 1,000 years, because this was a historic meeting, if they can meet, why can't Obama go meet Putin and sort this out on our terms, militarily, against the Islamic State? Very profound point. Professor Stephen F. Cohen, uh, professor of Russian studies at NYU and Princeton, great to have you with us tonight. Thank you.